Okay, carbon is one of the most abundant elements that we know. Um, it's very abundant in the universe. We consist uh, to a lot out of carbon, but it's probably the element where we know least about the liquid state. Yeah? Maybe despite some very rare radioactive elements. Um, this is because carbon at normal conditions does not uh, melt, it directly vaporizes at normal pressures. And uh, when we increase the pressure that we can actually make liquid carbon needs to be uh, several hundred bars, several hundred atmospheres, then uh, it has the highest melting point of all materials. Yeah, we are here at the HED HIBEF instrument, one of the seven research instruments of the European XFEL, and we are focusing here on the research of materials and matter in extreme conditions, such as very high electromagnetic fields, very high compression rates, density, temperature, pressure. And we have uh, two of the largest lasers uh, in Europe, coupled to an X-ray facility here, contributed by the International HIBEF User Consortium. They are both upstairs in this 11 by 11 meter room and we can couple them with x-rays coming from this direction interacting in two different vacuum chambers. In particular this interaction chamber 2 as we call it is optimized for shooting the x-rays at matter under extreme conditions and revealing the inner structure by means of x-ray diffraction. We launch our very short and shiny x-ray pulse get the scattering pattern and then we can back calculate exactly how the inner structure in the material looks. Okay, we use the Dipole 100X laser, it's really an exceptional tool to create our uh, samples of liquid carbon. For this we drive very strong compression waves into our samples, which are in this case made out of um, glassy carbon. And the nice um, thing is that the compression waves heat the samples at the same time when we compress it. In this way, we can generate temperatures about 6,000, 7,000 kelvins. And for a billionth of a second, a few nanoseconds, um, we have these conditions where we can make liquid carbon here in the laboratory. And now we have the very nice tool of European XFEL to characterize what's going on inside our samples. The X-ray pulses of European XFEL are only 25 femtoseconds in duration in this case, which is about 100,000 times shorter than these billionth of a second uh, for which our sample is existing. So we can make really snapshots, movies of how the samples are changing, how they are melting, and we can learn about the structure inside the samples. So we found in our experiment that uh, liquid carbon is a very complex uh, form of a liquid. It's a bit like water. Water, we also know it's a pretty complex liquid. Also, there are various different phases of ices. So carbon is also a very complex material. What we found is a so-called tetrahedral liquid that's also very similar to water. This means it has four nearest neighbor atoms to a central carbon atom. This is a very big contrast to simpler liquids that have uh, up to 12 nearest neighbors on average. And these uh, four nearest ramus, this is some remnant of the diamond structure that we actually generate beforehand. Yeah, when we bring our samples to certain conditions of uh, more than one million atmospheres and pressure and several thousand uh, degrees Kelvin, um, yeah, we first uh, transform our glassy carbon to diamond uh, when we are at pressures uh, a bit below one million atmospheres and if we go substantially above we can melt our samples so we can really map this uh, phase transition from solid to liquid. Experiments like this they allow us to test hypotheses, models. Like in physics in basic research we always have an observation of nature. We develop a model that we think how nature works and here in this experiment we were able for the first time to create this liquid to verify at what temperature and density this transition from the diamond to the melt occurs and what is the inner structure. And now we can say, well, some of these models which we have agree with nature, agree with our observation, and others agree less well. 
and those we can discard and we have refined our understanding of nature. So the synthesis, for example, of nano diamonds for industrial applications happens at very high temperatures and pressures. The interior of planets uh, in lower layers, which we can never reach by, by satellites or by boring into, are predicted to have nanocrystalline diamonds, which now have been proven in the last years by such experiments. And so this all brings us to a very diverse field of applications, in particular of the case of carbon. Mm -hmm.